All right, I've been sitting here and I've taken several attempts to start a conversation today with myself, which is essentially what I do when I do this. I have a conversation with myself. I run it through my brain and then I thought, you know what? I'm going to sit down, turn on the camera, and record this conversation I had with myself. And I got one to thinking where it's, there's this perception that all of a sudden today is more dangerous than it used to be, especially for kids and in the world in general. And it's not. I mean, they talk about how, well, it's more dangerous for kids now. When no, when you actually look at the statistics and the facts, the most dangerous time to be a child was through the 70s and 80s. It was the highest rate and the highest numbers period of abduction and murder and abuse of kids ever. Because they didn't have all the things, the kids help phone and all this other stuff that they have out there now, these crisis lines you could call that now all exist. Right. I was watching one of these other podcaster youtubers one of the larger ones today and they were talking in their thing about how it's more dangerous and how that they had just seen for the first time that it's 10 p.m do you know you know the, what they have to remind kids no that was from our time the first one of those started in the 70s and it was to remind parents that hey you did have kids maybe you should think about where they are people trying to think that it's there now it's not more dangerous now the world as a whole is not more dangerous it definitely looks that way and feels that way Given as connected as it is and as small as the world now seems, everybody is buried in an echo chamber through online and news and they bury themselves in it and they won't look at anything outside. We didn't exactly have an echo chamber like that when we were younger. No, you had your peer group, yeah, and most of you were like-minded or at the very least could get along even though you didn't quite think the same, but you were still friends. That doesn't happen now. People won't associate with anybody that's not a 100% synced in with their belief system. And where does that put us? That puts us at the idea that because of these echo chambers and the world seeming so much smaller due to the connected technology with the internet and instantaneous global feed of every event everywhere makes people go, oh my God, it's a lot worse. Or, oh no, you never expected something to happen here. Like just randomly, it's a place that doesn't get robbed that often. And then all of a sudden... They get, uh, the store gets robbed or someone is stabbed in a parking lot or shot in a parking lot. And people are like, oh my God, that could have happened to me. I was there last year. Well, no, it couldn't have happened to you because it was only on this day that that idiot that had the gun or the knife that shot and stabbed the person was there. So a year ago, that could not have been you. And people are like, oh, it doesn't seem, you'd never think it would happen here. And it does. And then if you look at the numbers as a whole in general, especially in smaller communities, Oh, that doesn't happen here. It's happened once in 20 years. But if you take the population and work it up to the per capita, it's probably within the national average. It's just a shocker because if you live somewhere small enough, it has some event like a murder might happen every 10 to 15 years. But you're still within the, the overall national average per capita. It's perception. People believe that things are a certain way when they're not. Now, grant you, there are places that are much more dangerous than others, and generally they manifest themselves where things are poor, people are more desperate, and people are more likely to do things, yes. Which leads me to another thought I've been thinking about quite a bit the last day or two. It's this whole idea where everyone says, well, you're privileged. People are privileged. You're from the privileged class. Here's the thing when it comes to privilege. There's only one real privilege out there in the world, and that is the privilege of money, wealth, not having to worry about all them other things that everyone else does. So you were able to do things, work towards things, go to school, get an education, you know, not be poor, not struggle, not have to concentrate so much on working today so you can eat tomorrow. The only real privilege out there is wealth. But do you get mad and sit there and be like, well, that's not fair. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to move along move forward, fight, claw, scrimp, save, and put yourself in that position. You're not supposed to sit there and go, well, it's not fair that this guy has a bunch of money and isn't giving me any. No, you, you go somewhere else. People, they, they don't want to take advantage of a situation that could make things better. You know, it's like if you're living somewhere and going, well, there's no good jobs around here, move. Well, I can't really afford to. Well, you figure out a way and you pack up and move. Go to where the job is. 
Or if you're one of these lucky ones now and you can work remote and you can solely work from home and you're like, oh, but it's so expensive in this city, move out of the city to a smaller community. It's not going to affect your job or your income. So why would you choose to live somewhere that you can't afford when you can go live somewhere just as nice that you could afford, which then would allow you to do things like take a vacation, go out to eat, maybe spend some time at the lake, get a cabin, or eventually even buy yourself a house. But no, we have turned into the whiny culture. The what about me? Why won't anybody share with me? Why won't they give me this? Give me the opportunity. No, make the opportunity. It's not about giving anything. It's about making it for yourself. You make your own opportunities. I mean, you, you sit there and you fight and you struggle and it's tough. And sometimes you feel like you can't make it and it's beaten down. And oh man, sometimes it can be oh so hard, especially when you're young and you're starting out and you think that everything is supposed to be this grand thing where you think that now... Kids nowadays think when they're starting out that they should automatically be three quarters of the way to the finish line. It doesn't work that way. You don't get to start the race three quarters to the finish line and everybody else in the back because you think that somebody has done you wrong or held you down somehow. No. Everyone starts at the same spot. Maybe somebody has a nicer uniform. If you're running a race, sure. Some, somebody's outfit might look a little better. Their shoes may be a little more comfortable when they're running. But you can get there too. You struggle the first few times. But then you get the better shoes. And then you finish a little faster. And then you win your first race. And then your second. And then your third. And nobody's going to focus on the fact that um, you started out losing races. No, they're only going to focus on the, the fact that you achieved as much as you did, even though you did not have the same starting advantage. There's advantages, but everybody starts at the same point. Everybody moves out of home at the same time, usually. I mean, you get people that started out a bit on their own when they were young, especially in, in our generation, Gen X. There are a lot of people that were out at like 14, 13 on the streets. I mean, I was on my own from 12. And, and that was just a reality. But you learn. I mean, you learn a lot of survival skills. I had friends that go, I could never do what you did. I can't, I could never just say, jump on a plane or on the bus and head across country to a city I'd never been to before and just get off and be like, well, I'm going to stay here now and turn around and try and find a place and find a job and get by. I've had many friends that said they just couldn't do that. But I can, it doesn't bother me. I, I actually enjoy it. Now, the first few times it was scary. It was forced upon me. I didn't have a choice, but you did it and you develop skills. Everybody starts the same. The only advantage, the only real privilege in this world and in this life is money. And now people seem to think that they shouldn't have to earn it, that it should be given to them, that everything should be free, that nobody has to, I don't know, earn, earn your colors anymore, right? I mean, maybe, okay, let's do it that way. Let's, let's, let's change it. Let's say that you don't have to earn your colors anymore. You turn 18 or 20 or 21, we'll pick that age and you're going to be, you're now going to be on your own. Nobody's going to support you anymore. So you turn 21, you step out, you go down to the place, wherever it's going to be, you get in line, you walk by, and there'll be a whole line of people and everybody's going to punch and kick you at least once. And when you get to the end of the line, we're going to give you your $100,000 starter check. Would that be worth it? Would you be willing to do that and go through that hardship? No. So nobody wants to have any pain anymore. Nobody wants to be made fun of. Nobody wants to have hurt feelings. I mean, every day it's the, the world just is getting shittier and shittier. It seems to suck. But it's not the world. Maybe it's you. If everything is always so horrible, no matter what you're doing or where you go, there seems to be one common denominator. 
and that would be you. So fix it. Fix yourself. Yeah, it's a little harsh and it's a little mean, but quite frankly, it comes from a comment I read that I always forget every once in a while that uh, I put no blocks on the comments or sense or whatever but every once in a while someone will say something that youtube itself will block and i always forget where they hide these things for me to read but i come across them and some, a lot of them are just it's not really anything it's one swear word or something so you know i just like oh yeah put that in there put that in there it's no big deal but i come across this one and it wasn't just a comment i mean this thing was like seven paragraphs and i read it and I'm reading it and I'm like, this here, this is your next mass shooter. Like it screamed. I'm angry. I hate the world. I blame everybody for everything. It, it was truly when you read it, it was something that was full of absolute hate. And it would be my guess, like, I wouldn't be surprised. I read it. This individual probably is working on their own manifesto somewhere before they go crazy and they wind up shooting up a joint. Like, it, it is wild. And I know that YouTube didn't flag it because it was an automatic, you know, through their algorithm and their AI that they use that declared it possibly inappropriate. And if it was somebody venting and just raging out, sure. But if you read this, you would have went, this guy is sick. This person is absolutely demented. And the weird thing is, is they do have themselves a channel where they are posting videos and this stuff. So I went and checked some of it out. They're pretty messed up. Now, there's nothing in the videos that would show anything other than this is an individual that clearly needs therapy. But when you read what they wrote in that comment, I mean, I couldn't even read it. It's one thing I'm, I'm looking at it on the big screen right now. And it's the one thing that if I read it, the video would get taken down. I'd probably get a strike. It would, it would change everything. But it... Uh, it's pretty wild. First off, they start by, you know, how they absolutely hate and have nothing but vitriol, vile hate for their own parents. You know, going on, blaming things like this, clearly by the end of it, this is somebody that was abused when they were younger. Near from what I can uh, read, it was like they, they believed they were abused and their parents knew and their parents allowed it or their parents were the ones that did it. I mean, this is clearly somebody that is absolutely so hate-filled that they are blinded by their rage. And I will not be surprised if they weren't going to do something eventually. I mean, maybe never. They could be an absolute coward, and this is just their way of venting. Um, but I, I read it, and it is something of concern. I mean, if I was a teacher or any type of an official or something that come along with this, I would definitely be looking into this individual. Which got me thinking, when I see this, as a human being, as a citizen of society, what is my responsibility in this? I mean, I've seen this, I read it, it's clearly of concern. But where does my responsibility lie? I mean, I have no way of determining who this individual really is. So it's not like I could sit there and have anybody check on them. And is that just me becoming too weirded out because just read a comment and you're like, oh my God, I don't like what they said. And it could be, it could be something it could not. So where does my responsibility lie? I mean, the most I can do is send it on to YouTube and see if they would check the person's account for any other types of similar comments or whatever, and then they pass it along. But is that what you do? Like, if somebody is venting their frustrations, no matter how disturbing an individual thinks it is when they're venting it, venting is therapeutic. So you, you read it and you think, this is absolutely, this is going to be the next nut job you're going to see on the news. 
at the same time, if they didn't vet this way, maybe that's what made them the next nut job. Right? When you see these people, it's not years of venting. It's the last few months of venting, but they kept it all inside and hid it during the meantime. But this individual has been posting their stuff for a couple of years. I mean, they got an open YouTube channel. And they automatically on their own have it declared that it is to be restricted as in not for kids or anyone under 18 that the, you know, it's the whole you must sign in, prove you're 18 to view this channel. Right. So where does an individual's responsibility lie when they see something like this? Anyway, I could continue on to that for way, way, way too long. And it's mostly been nonsensical here anyway in this video. It's just some random thoughts again. But I had to get them out. I got a bunch more. I'd rather like to get on and do them in the morning. First thing. Got to work it out. I need another place where I can, don't have to hear anything else or anybody else or have anybody around when I do this. Really weirds me out when I'm sitting here by myself talking to a camera. Talking to it and going, hey, everybody, how are you? And there's other people on the other side of the wall. So they can hear me essentially having a conversation with myself. It kind of can make a person a little self-conscious, but not really. It doesn't happen with the live because there's interaction going on, and that's that's different. I don't know. That That's just a thing. It's kind of weird. I've never been one about actually throwing myself out there like that. Anyway. I'm going to end that here. So this is Drac saying until next time. Peace out, everyone.